everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And this is the show where we talk about romantic reading that we've been doing, romance reading wrap up. And we do this once a month. It's so much fun. And I am film critic Rachel Wagner and Bree is here. Hello, everybody. Yes. So how have you been? How's your summer been? Oh my gosh. It's been (laughs) great. It's been terrible. (laughs) It's it's been a lot. I had a, a mom moment yesterday where I like cried. My husband's like, what are you crying for? And I'm just like, I can't find the remote. Nobody listens to me when I ask them to please put stuff back where it belongs. And I'm the one that always gets the shaft because nobody <laughs> listens to me. <laughs> so yeah, that's how like summer's. do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, that, is, yeah. that is summer in a nutshell. Yeah. It has been a long summer. Like, it's been a good summer for me. I've actually been able to travel a little bit, and I've been able to uh, to get out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> so that's been good, but I don't know. It just felt long. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's been it's been relaxing. It's been a lot. I don't know. Like you said, it's been just, I think, a mentally long summer. There's been, like, yeah. really good days, but then... I have my days where I'm like, I like this pandemic life is, uh, I've had enough of it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think because like, re gearing up uh, with the the whole Delta variant thing, it's just was like, so exhausting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and it's so, you know, man, like my sister's partner, like they live in Missouri and Missouri is like one of those hot spots. You know, yeah. I mean, anyone that's listening, I'm sure, you know, but like, you know, my sister got vaccinated because the state fair came and she really wanted to go to the concert to see boys to men. So she got the vaccination <laughs> and she was sick. Her second shot. I will say like, it's oh, so really? funny. It, I feel bad, but it's so funny. Cause I'm just like, you are the person that would get like terribly sick but her partner's like i'm not getting vaccinated i'm not wearing a mask and he tested positive yesterday and i was just man it's so it's such a slap in the face to like it's such a like wake up call of like this is still going on people (laughs) like we are still living with this so vaccinated we are (laughs) pro vaccination podcast we are get vaccinated. <laughs> and if you don't, you know, that's like, I don't like wearing a mask. I don't like wearing a bra half the time, but like for my protection yeah, and yours, just like put a mask on. <laughs> yeah. At least be respectful of other people's rules. And yeah. uh, if they are asking you to do it, don't be a jerk. Yeah. That's what I say. Yeah. I think at it's the just, very it's, least. it's still like hitting me. And I think it's what makes me sad. It's just like taking all of that out of it, just that we're still in it so much, you know, kids are going back to school and it's like, this is still the reality for us like, yeah. like two years later, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's a wild, but I guess at least we've had reading. <laughs> we've had us. reading. We have Christmas movies coming up. Yeah. I'm like, come on Hallmark. Let's, let's we do this. Get the announcement. Uh <laughs> Hopefully by the time this airs next week that we will have it. But I, I don't know if maybe we won't get it this year. And then we all our preview episodes will be a mess. <laughs> oh, we have to get some Christmas. We <laughs> have to. <laughs> like normally I'm already sort of planning because I because normally they we get like an initial announcement in May and then we get the full announcement in July. Even last year with. Uh, 2020 being so crazy we still got the full announcement in uh in july and yeah here nothing we nothing. we've gotten individual movie announcements but i'm like i need to know <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh and nothing from lifetime either or you know just like where are my announcements right stop keeping everything hush hush guys <laughs> For this month, we are talking about The Summer Seekers by Sarah Morgan. So this is not a Hallmark uh, book this month. And we like to switch it up every now and then. Yeah. And uh, the summary that I uh, wrote for this one is, The Summer Seekers tells the story of a road trip and how it impacts three women. First, there is 80-year-old Kathleen who loves adventure and doesn't want to be put in a home. Then there is her daughter, Liza, who resents her mother's free spirit 
and feels burdened with the responsibilities of motherhood for her twin girls. She's struggling to connect and she's struggling to connect with her husband, Sean. Kathleen hires Martha, who drives her on the road trip across Route 66, and as a recently divorced woman, she needs a break from her family. She meets, and then she meets handsome Josh on the road. <laughs> so what were your overall thoughts about this book? I really loved it. <laughs> What did you think? I thought it was really good, too. I liked it a lot. I thought that all three women were very relatable. And I connected, actually, with Liza quite a bit because I, I feel like sometimes people like Kathleen are very stressful to be around. Yeah. (laughs) Like, you admire their free spirit and their, you know, their their the how comfortable they they are with themselves but the uh the downside is is that they're you always feel a little bit like i don't know what they're going to do i you know that it makes you feel a little insecure and so i know i connected with her character and i felt like she could have easily been a really unlikable character but i don't know i just i thought they did the author did a really good job of making her seem she wasn't just like a wet blanket. Yeah. She, I, I initially, can understand her. Yeah. Initially, I think the way that the story kind of sets up, you're kind of skeptical with Liza because I was the same. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like her because you're introduced to Kathleen and she's, you know, had this incident in her home and we know that she's older and you know, like my grandmother's over 80 and she still chooses to live by herself. She doesn't want to move from her home. So like I get like I got that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you see how she's kind of like this free spirit and um, wants to what does she say? Uh, something along the lines of like you have to seek that summer feeling all year long. And I, I'm just like that is Kathleen. And Liza is so like by the rules and you know she's Kathleen's opposite, but then what Sarah Morgan does is is the story develops. You really understand why Liza is the way that she is. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because of her relationship with her mom. And we learn so much about their relationship from both of their perspectives. So I was like, I think around halfway through, I was like, okay, I like Liza. Like I understand Mm -hmm. why you are the way that you are. So if you haven't read it, listeners, give her some time. (laughs) Well, I wrote in my notes, I said, planners get a bad rap in these books. (laughs) I want to stand up for planners because (laughs) doing everything spontaneous is not always better. Yeah. Sometimes it's worse because you don't have it planned out and you don't have the things that you need. You're not ready. And, and, uh, (laughs) yeah. But I think plug for planners. And, and, and I think because in contrast to Kathleen, she just lived this, adventurous life and you know that definitely took a toll on her relationship with Liza but Liza becomes this woman that's very like structured and she is going to be the mom that's physically there for her kids and then it kind of bites her in the butt it was just like she did oh my gosh I think the mother-daughter contrast between the two of them was just so crazy but what I loved about Kathleen too was just she got hurt and she is just like I will I I won't she didn't want to it's not I think she says that like she was a coward she ran away from situations that could hurt her and unfortunately Liza kind of lives with the brunt of that but she's as women I think especially when you become a mother like that's all you are and Kathleen was like I'm not going to be just somebody's mom and just somebody's wife like what do, she asked Liza like what do you have for yourself other than what you do for your kids, you know, and what you do for your husband. And it's like, I don't really have anything. (laughs) Well, and also I felt, I felt for Kathleen because she didn't really want to be a mother. Yeah. And so she was kind of making it up on the fly as she went along. And as obviously that would be really tricky for a young person to understand uh, but I think by the end of the book, I think that Liza f- 
finally started to get it kind of with her thinking about her relationship with her daughters and uh, with her family, you know, that she finally sort of kind of got her mother. And I think that is something Mm -hmm. that is true to life that when we're growing up, our parents are our authority figures. They're the ones that set the rules. They're the ones that we, we look to for guidance in, you know, in a healthy relationship. But I think you reach a point in usually your early twenties where your parents become human. You know, they're not the authority figures anymore. You realize that they were just making it up on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> they were just it. doing the best that they could. And they're not that different than me. Yeah. And, <laughs> And I think that Eliza, that Eliza kind of had that experience in the story. Yeah. And I mean, I, she really humanized Eliza because I mean, like she goes to, is she, she's a teacher or something. She goes to work and one of the daughters texts her and is like, Hey, can you do this? And like, nobody asks her how her day is. It's her anniversary. The husband Mm -hmm. forgets. And it's just, she has that moment of like, this cannot be it for me. Mm -hmm. Like I can't like all I am to you guys is this role. And like, they don't look at her as anything else, you know, until she like kind of removes herself from the situation to take care of herself. So yeah, it was, yeah. You can speak to this, I'm sure as a mom, but like mom guilt is a real thing. Oh yeah. And uh, you saw that in, uh, with, Liza and with a Kathleen, you know, that uh, they you know didn't feel like despite their best efforts that they were good mothers. And, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's a real thing that women, you know, we just, we, we beat ourselves up over, uh, over this whole idea of this per- like perfect mother that we see. Yeah. And it's a cycle, you know, I, I think even in our, our real lives, like, I think about my relationship with my mom sometimes and I'm like, sometimes I really need to show her some more grace (laughs) because Mm -hmm. I mean, she had me at 17. She was still really young. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a lot of ways, we kind of like grew up, I guess, together. And I can be really hard on her, you know, but then I feel like sometimes she can be really hard on me. I'm like, you raised us in a small town surrounded by family. And I'm literally in this city by myself winging it, like cut me some slack. So I just think that mother daughter uh, representation of like, just g- giving each yeah. other a break was so well done in the book. Because I would be stressed out if I had a mother like Kathleen <laughs> I'm gratefully I don't. <laughs> Which is crazy because you seem so adventurous, Rachel. <laughs> but I like to have things planned too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're a busy woman, so you have to, you literally have to plan. <laughs> I don't like just like I I don't really like uh it makes me a little stressed out when things are I, I I wouldn't say I'm a very spontaneous person and like part of the fun of something to me is like actually sort of planning it out and, uh, and making it cute and fun and, and like thinking of those like special details of something like when I'm entertaining or when I'm uh, traveling Uh, and I know other people that just drive some crazy. (laughs) (laughs) What did you think? What did you think of the whole like, because Sarah Morgan is like a UK author. What did you think of the choice of Route 66? Like, this, She's a what I, author? She's over in the UK. Like she lives oh, over okay. in the UK. So what did you think of the choice of Route 66 as like the place that they go drive? Yeah, I mean, that's very iconic. I did think that the book could have done a better job of kind of portraying all the little like pit stops along yeah, the way. I wanted that it. too. I wanted that too. Yeah. I mean, there's really, I felt like really only the Grand Canyon was kind of the more sort of fleshed out Mm -hmm. spot, but it would have been fun if they'd had like, I don't know, I like the giant rubber band ball or, you know, like, I mean, those weird places. Yeah, Yeah, because I was like, man, like, I don't, I mean, obviously we know about it. 
but I don't feel like I see it much in stories or, or movies as much as maybe it was once upon a time. So I'm like, man, this would have been really cool to like experience each stop that they actually take on a little bit more. But yeah, I also I'm just like, well, maybe the story really was about what each woman had going on and that the trip was just part of it. Yeah. And what did you think of Martha as a character? You know, I I feel like Kathleen and Liza's story outshined Martha a little bit, um, just personally. But mm-hmm. I mean, she was a woman that's like getting over heartbreak, you know. So I I still really liked her situation. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I liked her I as like, a character. Yeah, I feel like you needed her character because it it, it was just a lot of levity. It was a nice break from the conflict between Liza and Kathleen. And I think it would have felt more uh, just off-putting. I maybe like you needed that sort of just light, the whole Josh and, and Martha thing, I think to kind of break it up. Like you could literally just pick the new love of your life up on the side of the highway. (laughs) You never know where he'll yeah. be. <laughs> yeah. Hot, hot, hot hitchhiker. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, uh, I don't know about that, but <laughs> yeah, a little, so I'd be a little nervous yeah. about doing that myself, but yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Josh, hunky Josh, he was, he was fun. I was not really that invested in Sean and Liza. I don't know. I, I felt like that was my least favorite part of the book yeah uh yeah I wasn't really I mean I just man I don't I I, I wasn't really invested in the whole Sean situation I mean I guess it's hard because I like I think the Liza and the relationship with her kids felt a little bit stronger he just was like so disappointing that I was just like okay whatever he's just going to be disappointing but like you know, y'all, your kids are teenagers about to go off to college. Like, you mean to tell me after all this time, you're just now realizing that, like, you call your wife and ask her, hey, where's my blue shirt? Instead of like, hey, how your, how's your day? What are you up to? Like, <laughs> it shouldn't take all yeah. this time for you to realize that. Well, and of course, you have to live life. So you're going to have to have those kinds of -of run-of-the-mill interactions but you also need to have the more thoughtful yeah it shouldn't be like a big revelation that oh i need to take care and be kind to my wife right amazing the person you're calling and asking where your shirt is like maybe be nice to her (laughs) yeah and i mean i know that they were trying to kind of give her this sort of temptation with finn the the rock star that moves in next door. Uh, and I I did kind of, there were a few moments where I was like, Oh, she's, she's going to, she's going to take a turn in this book. <laughs> uh, but, she, but spoiler alert, she didn't, which was good, but I just wish I'd liked Sean as her companion better. <laughs> yeah. Like that was an interesting conflict, but she still ends up with Sean. <laughs> yeah. It's like she introduces this this possibility that of something that could just be it could have easily been like a fun fling thing but I mean it's I think her story serves as like a second chance is chances romance type thing and we aren't going to really you know if it's there's not really cheating in a lot of romance. So I'm like, okay, she's not going to go there with this guy, but he is going to serve as like this possibility, this thing that could happen. Um, But I do kind of like that after that happens, that's now it kind of ticked me off that Sean showed up, but I'm also glad that he showed up when he did, because it wasn't like, I didn't want, I was I was interested to see like what her reasons for not doing it with him were going to be. And I mean, she kind of goes through it like I'm married. We can't do this. But then Sean shows up because I was like, if he didn't show up, who knows? She might have changed her mind. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I mean, they, that part was well done. I, I, I did think uh, this book might be taking a turn. Yeah, yeah. I really did. But, yeah, I just, I don't know. The ending was supposed to be so great and romantic with them, like, re- reconciling. And I was just kind of like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then, um, what is it? They find, the girls find that book that she's been reading, like, in a bag or something or article. Like, is your marriage in trouble? And I'm like, yeah. it took for you all to find this article? N- never mind that mom just, like, was like, screw this, I'm leaving town and left. Like that didn't right. even that wasn't even the come to Jesus they needed. It was like finding this article for them to be like, oh gosh, is something wrong with mom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you think of the whole plot line with Kathleen and Ruth? I don't know. You tell me what you thought about it. <laughs> so I I thought it would, I don't know if we needed it. I think there was enough going on through just the road trip yeah. and their relationship that I don't know if we needed this kind of added layer, but I thought it was, it was, it was, it was good. It was, you know, a, a different side of Kathleen, I guess that she had, she had to sort of learn to forgive and, and uh, the, the reconciliation between uh, this woman who had taken her, her, first love yeah from her was it was good i think it really served i i enjoyed it more from liza's perspective because Mm. it really showed her that like my mom had a life before i came along and it kind of made her under i think it humanized her mom a little bit more for her but at first i was like oh god not this (laughs) We don't need this in the book, but I mean, it, 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 it happened and people get burned and it, I think it showed how that experience shaped who Kathleen became, like yeah. what she chose, how she chose to live her life afterwards. It was really because of that situation. Yeah. Well, I would like to try to find a quote from the book that we're reading that we've read And this is the one that I found for this book. And it's Martha's talking. And she says, basically, there wasn't a single thing about the past she changed, except perhaps finding a way to make people you loved live forever. But all anyone really had was right now. And she was determined to make the most of right now. And no doubt her family would disapprove of her current choices. But if there was one thing she learned on this trip, it was that the only opinion that mattered was your own. Yeah. Yes. So I thought that was good. And yeah. I I think that there was something that was kind of escapism about this whole book for this year, because the whole, I think we all are kind of wanting to go on road trips, to travel, to experience things in a new way uh, after what we've all experienced. And uh, so I think that that's something that we can really relate to. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite was, I think you need to find that summer feeling for the rest of the year. And I'm just, Mm -hmm. you know, as much as I love Christmas and I love when Valentine's, you know, there's just something about summer Mm -hmm. that is just fun. That's the time, you know, but fun and wanting to travel and all of that that should be all year long you know so I, yeah. yeah it had a lot of like takeaway really good quotes I think mm-hmm. it, it did it really did all right uh let's see spice level so I would say this is medium level spice it's really just two scenes mm-hmm. in the end one between Josh and Martha and one between Liza and Sean uh it's not like they're easy to skip over yeah. if, if it's not your thing. If it's not your thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the chemistry, like I said, I didn't think there was great chemistry between Sean and Liza, but I did feel the chemistry between Josh and Martha. I thought that was good. And uh, I thought the women had good chemistry yeah. together. Unfortunately, it felt like Sean and Liza had really lost whatever chemistry had mm-hmm. been there. 
Um, so, I mean, good luck on rekindling it. <laughs> and Josh and Martha, it did. It felt really like fresh and new and exciting. So, yeah, it, you know, there's an, the old relationship that has to try to find it. And here's the new one that's just like blossoming with it. So they so for trope time, we had the road trip and then we also had uh, unlikely friendships Mm -hmm. and the you've you've changed trope where yeah. uh, you're not the same person that I I I fell in love with kind of a thing and uh you had that going on and uh was there anything else that you would say uh I guess mother daughter relationship mother daughter yeah mother daughter uh for Liza and Sean I'd say like marriage and trouble second chance them figuring it out I think Mm -hmm. yeah so what would you give how many uh crowns would you give uh the summer seekers mm -hmm. i gave it four crowns <laughs> what did you do yeah same yeah i re i really i enjoyed it i thought it was very good i would read more from sarah morgan she did a yeah. very good job yeah We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. So let's dive into our other reading that we've done. This month for me, most of my reading involved pre-orders, pre I guess, pre-ARCs, um, uh, uh, because I interviewed, I read three books and interviewed three authors that are going to be for future episodes of the podcast. Uh, so they haven't come out yet, <laughs> uh, but uh but I did have one other book, but why don't you start? What is uh, your first book that you read this month? So I have a couple that aren't romances, but it just August, I was kind of in a little bit of a reading slump. I read, I tried to read one book that I could not get into and it just really ruined my mojo. But oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I did read, I remember nothing by Nora Ephron. I've been wanting to read Nora Ephron books. So I started oh, with this one. So it's good. really short. It's like a three hour audio book. I started it on my morning walk and finished it within like an hour. Or so I listened to it at like 2.5 speed. And I just loved it. And I, I think this is actually like her last book before she unfortunately passed. And she yeah. kind of talks about that a little bit in the book. So it was kind of bittersweet. But it was just a, it was like things that she remembers and things that she should remember but doesn't remember it was a lot of fun and she narrated it herself so it was really nice to like listen to her um share her story so yeah if you're looking for something quick to read and you're a Nora Ephron fan I remember nothing I think it was a lot of fun to listen to yeah I love that book uh, mm -hmm. she is if you only know her from her movies you really should check out her books of essays I love I, I remember nothing but I also really love I Feel Bad About My Neck and yes. her first <laughs> book of essays. And she just has such a charming and uh, heartfelt way of writing about a variety of topics. And you feel like you know this person and you can understand her. And I, I love that book. I think it's so good. Mm -hmm. Really, I love a good book of essays. So. Uh, all right. Well, my first book that I read is called A Very Bavarian Christmas by Katie M. Reed. And like I said, you're, we're going to have Katie on the podcast. Uh, so there'll be more about that uh, coming up. But uh, it's a cute 
little book that's about this woman who uh, has to go back to her hometown. <laughs> Shocking, right? Of Bavarian Falls, uh, where they have this mile long, uh, huge uh, Christmas store, Christmas Emporium place in Bavarian Falls. And uh, she she has to go back and she's kind of frustrated. She hates it. She's sort of a Scrooge at the beginning. And uh, she, of course, gets warmed up to the joys of Christmas. And and it, this, I think she did a really good job with sort of supporting characters and and uh, making, uh, making Holly is the name of the character, making her kind of a little bit snarky and a little bit funny. So I enjoyed it. I thought it was cute uh, for a nice little Christmas read if you're looking for something. Um, and uh, so what is your next? That one book sounds that adorable. Yeah. Um, my next one was A Fourth of July Proposal by Kim Finley, which is kind of a, yeah, it was like a childhood friends to lovers, second chance romance. The The main character is like the daughter of a preacher and she's like the town good girl and she's just so ready to leave and change kind of like the stigma she has. Like she doesn't want to become this bad girl, but like people take advantage of her niceness basically. And she's like, I just don't want to stay here. I feel like if I stay here, I'm going to be that person. And then this guy that she kind of not really dated, but like he w- he came from a bad home and she just like kind of hung out and she kind of looked out for him and she was really nice to him. And um, he leaves and he joins the military and then he come, but he was like kind of a troublemaker, like the town bad boy. And so when he comes back, it's really like him kind of considering to like settle down and stay. And she's like, I'm ready to leave this place. Uh, but his, rep- his rep- uh, reputation is obviously like, kicking him in the butt like it really just showed how kind of small town people aren't necessarily that easily like forgiving like people remember stuff so um it was really cute it's a really it's sweet it's uh like a heartwarming novel so there's no steam in it or anything like that and i really liked it so yeah it's a fourth of july proposal by kim finley mm-hmm. that sounds good i i haven't heard of that one yeah that sounds good all right, my next is A Christmas in the Alps by Melody Carlson. Yay. This is another one that you will be hearing more from. We have the interview with Melody uh, coming up in September. And uh, she we, was so we, sweet. <laughs> yeah, we've talked to her before. So it's our second time having her on the podcast. And she's so prolific as an author. It's yeah. unbelievable to me. The woman's written she's, like everything, she's written over 200 <laughs> books. Yeah, amazing. And so this one, Christmas in the Alps, is all about this character who uh, finds out that there's this kind of secret treasure that are, that was left in uh, France by her grandmother, and so she goes to France to try to figure out what it is. She ends up reconnecting with her. Uh, with her family, with her grandmother's family. Then she meets a handsome man along the way, of course. And uh, it, 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 you, get to, you get to read all about France at Christmas and everything. And it was, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Did you, get a, did you get a chance to read this? Yeah, I really liked it yeah. too. Yeah. The, it yeah. was like the French escape I needed. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I thought she did a good job with that. And just adding sort of the the treasure hunting angle was kind of fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. She's so good. Yeah, uh, she's a very fun writer. And I, she her books are very concise. They don't, uh, I don't know, you just kind of get in and get out and you enjoy the ride. <laughs> that <Yeah>. makes sense. <laughs> uh, all right, what is your next one? My next one is From One Night to Desert Queen by Pippa Roscoe. And this is book two in her Diamond Inheritance trilogy. So the these three sisters 
basically their grandfather yeah their grandfather passes away i I I don't think they had like a relationship with him but um they find out that they will inherit his estate but they have to find these lost family jewels so kind of like a treasure hunt as well Um, but they're kind of like spread out in different places like the first book the girl travels to costa rica to track down this french guy because he has an idea where they are and in this one star travels to the middle east and um, there's the, like one of their great grandmothers had like a journal and it's like clues that one of the jewels, the, the, she's actually the woman that hit him, uh, would be over there. She would have to travel over there to find it. And she's like this hopeless romantic. The other two sisters are like, she's going to be blinded by how romantically she sees life. And she's just determined, like, I'm going to show them I'm tough. I can go out there and I can find them. And it's her romance. Unbeknownst to her, she like meets this guy and he's a sheik. <laughs> and she has no idea like she's like whisking the sheik out of his castle but he's like going along with it because he's like so by the rules and here she comes this fun like you know rose colored glasses romantic and like they just totally balanced each other out it is I remember it being a little steamy again it's like towards the end but you can totally just like skim past it if it's not your thing it's a quick book it's less than like 250 pages and I loved it. It's like one of those romances for romantics. So again, it's From One Um, Night to Desert Queen by Pippa Roscoe. That sounds really cute. I like that. It's like, is it, it's almost like a royal. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, Yeah. All mine are steam free so far. Uh, Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All of mine actually that I'm recommending this, that I'm talking about this, uh, this month. Uh, the next book that I have is Since You've Been Gone by Terry Ferris. And this is another one that I'm going to be hearing more about. Recorded the interview with Terry. It's going to be coming out in September. But basically, this book is about a woman who uh, goes back to the small town. <laughs> There's a theme here. There's a theme. <laughs> and she has this, there's this family business. Uh, that she uh, that is kind of it's kind of like a general store type of situation that the family had run for forever, but uh, it has fallen on hard times. And the owner of the the business now is her old high school flame. Again, we've seen this many times, but I, I still liked it. I thought it was good, and. Uh, there's also this secondary romance, uh, between there's this woman who comes into town who, uh, is actually pregnant. She doesn't know who the father is and, uh, she's kind of, uh, on the outs, you know, the town and everybody's gossiping and everything. And then there's, she ends up painting, uh, and working on this house with uh the local handyman <laughs> hunky handyman guy who's who's doesn't want to make a commitment or everything but they they have the spark and this is a faith based book but it's pretty mild i guess uh the um town pastor named Nate is one of the characters and uh Madison who is the pregnant girl she's she goes through the most sort of faith transition throughout the story and it starts to uh gain more confidence and uh I, th- I thought that was done pretty well it is i think a little bit too long it feels a little it was a thick book <laughs> yeah yeah um, that would be my only kind of flaw with it i guess but it was it i enjoyed it i liked yeah. reading it and and it was nice to have two relationships. And you know, that's always nice when you get a, it's not just the A relationship, but there's like a solid B relationship mm-hmm. in a story is, is always nice. Yeah. And uh, sure. so did you have any, anything else? You yeah. The last about? one is um, a skeleton in the family by Lee Perry. So this is a cozy mystery and I loved it. It's the first book in this series. Um, And it's about, I guess the series in general is just this family has had this skeleton that they like 
I don't know if they, I found, I think they found it in the house and just kind of adopted it. The story that the main character tells throughout the book is that her parents like bought it at an auction, Um, but he can talk and everything like that. And in this first book, it's her trying to one, keep him a secret from her daughter. She wants to let her daughter know, but he's like, not yet, like not yet. You know, she's in like middle school. She's just, he doesn't think she's ready. Uh, So he like basically lives up in the attic and um it's about him figuring them wanting to figure out who how he unfortunately ended up to be a skeleton there is like um kind of like comic con or something like that i can't remember what they called it in the book but he dresses up and caught in like cosplay (laughs) and goes and when they get home he's like i have this weird feeling i saw somebody and it starts like triggering these memories like in like little Burts and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, this first mystery is dedicated to like figuring out what happened to him. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm I have like the first I think three books in the the series, and I'm definitely going to be like binging. I know the third one's a Halloween book, so I think I'm going to read the second one in September and then save that third one for Halloween. But it was so good. So if you're a cozy Ooh. mystery lover and you don't mind a little bit of the paranormal-ish, I mean, he's the only paranormal aspect to the story. I definitely recommend it. It's so cozy. It was so much fun. She's like an adjunct pr- professor. So we get to see her as like a single mom and trying to like, you know, prove herself in this professor world. It was so cute. So yeah, that's my last one. What's Thank your you next good. one? Um, so my last one is I read An Amish Flower Farm by Mindy Steele. This is a Hallmark Publishing book. And overall, I enjoyed it. I kind of like the weird element of, uh, like, I, I kind of like the weird sub-genre of Hallmark movies, of, like, Amish movies, which I think is so strange. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so this Amish like, romances are huge. They're a big deal. So <laughs> so weird. <laughs> so strange i don't know why why we like pick them as the we're gonna yeah tell a lot of amish romances but no it's a thing there's the one of my favorite movies last year on hallmark was the one the amish uh i think it was called follow your heart it was good it was really good anyway so i I, this was the first novel that i'd ever read of amish fiction (laughs) and in general, I, I liked it. I thought it was a sweet romance and I liked uh, the Amish setting. And I felt like, I mean, what do I know? But it seemed fairly accurate. Like it had all the the Wonder Bar and, and the German language mm-hmm. and all of that uh, mixed in. And uh, it, it, it had themes of faith, but not like too strong, but, but it was there. And uh, so it felt relatively authentic. I'm sure somebody that's actually almost would be like, no, not so much, but whatever. Uh, the only thing I didn't love is that it was a little bit of a kind of a Beauty and the Beast kind of story, which I love Beauty and the Beast. But when it's translated to like regular people, it sometimes makes me a little uncomfortable because she was, she was, I would say, on the sort of mousy side she was very timid the lead character she was very shy and he had like a temper and he was kind of angry and it's the whole thing of like loving her made him uh change and and grow and and, but i kind of was like "Mm, i'm a little worried about their future yeah (laughs) i feel like he could lose it and get really angry and uh, she, I mean, she did have some spunk, so she wasn't just a total doormat, but like I said, that dynamic of sort of the sweet ingenue makes the beast tempered, you know, angry man change his ways. Isn't my favorite. <laughs> yeah. And if it's a really like passive heroine and a very yeah. like aggressive ish hero, I think sometimes it just, Mm, it does. <laughs> I've read books where people are like, oh, this was too much. And it's like, well, if you kind of look, I, I guess it's one of you need more backstory sometimes of like, why is he the way that he is? 
And it, like if you see if she's super passive and he's just kind of written really aggressively, it can definitely come off in certain ways that I don't think it's intended to. But yeah, it's just it's really hard to pull off, I think, in contemporary the contemporary world, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. And you just worry about you don't want to leave the book being like I'm worried about the future <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but, but it's still I still overall enjoyed it yeah um, so that was the last book that I uh, I read and uh, so let's talk about next month I have an idea what if we read the Magnolia Sisters by our good friend Elise Murray okay yeah I think it's it's a good one, and uh, it's I always like to support her because she's awesome, and it's the, there's four in the series, but we'll just read the first one. Yay. The Magnolia Sisters. Yeah, I love her. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, very good. Well, we hope that you'll let us know what you have been reading. What was your good summer reads uh, in the comment section or on Twitter? We'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you've read The Summer Seekers, what do you think of it? We'd love to hear what uh, you think, which of uh, the women that you connected with in the book and uh, well, how many how many crowns you would give it. Uh, and uh, that would be a lot of fun. So, Brie, where can people find you? I'm on Instagram at Falling for Romance. And you can also hear my voice on the Categorically Romance podcast. And please let us know, are you a Kathleen, Liza, or a Martha? Which one yes. are you? <laughs> I'm an aspiring Kathleen, okay? <laughs> but I'm definitely a Liza, I think. <laughs> no, I, think I, I think I'm a Liza, but not that bad. Like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> calm down a little bit. You have a Kathleen spirit, I'm just saying. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, let us know. That would be really fun to know. Uh, so you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. And you can check in the description my Goodreads, too. I'd love to have you follow me on there, see what I'm reading. And uh, make sure you're following the podcast to Home Reviews Pod and Home Reviews Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group which we have a lot of fun on there talking about all different things and uh, including books and whatever it is we're, we're talking about. Uh, it, it's a lot of fun and it's only $2 a month to join the Patreon. So check that out. And then we also have the merch store, which has lots of fun designs. designs. So please take a look over there and that, that all the information's in the description. So thanks so much. And thanks so much, Bree. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye everyone. Bye.